In this video, I want to speak on the fear agenda. The fear agenda. There are so many people that are living in fear. They're living in the bondage of fear. But before I start, I want to give a shout out to the beautiful young lady that sent the donation on Venmo. I truly appreciate that. And I give a big shout out to you. There are so many people that's living in the fear or the bondage of fear in this day and time. It's interesting because I was in the post office a few days ago and I might have told this story on my other channel. But I walked in the, the post office and sometimes I'll go in, I have a mask on, sometimes I won't have a mask on because I really don't believe in that. It really does no good to wear those masks. So I went into the post office and I was standing in line and this young white woman walked in and she kept staring at me. And while she was staring at me, she had this big smile on her face. You know how you have women that smile at men and yet they're smiling with their eyes? I saw the smile in her eyes. And she kept staring and she kept smiling. And in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, why is this woman staring at me? So I'm looking ahead, and every now and then I'll turn around and look, and the woman just sitting there just smiling. So when I finished with my transactions, I went outside, got in my car. The woman came out behind me, and she walked up to me rather quickly. And she said to me, she says, I really appreciate what you did in there. And I'm like, huh? She says, I'm so glad you did what you did. I really appreciate that. And I said, what exactly did I do? And she said, there are times that I just want to take this mask off. I just want to go into the post office or the supermarket without my mask. But I just don't, I just feel afraid. So I said to her, I said, you know, I said, that's the problem with many people today is the fact that they are living in fear. You know, it's it's like the politicians and the media put them in the frame of mind or put them in bondage of fear. And when you are when you are afraid, you become weakened. You're off your square. And when you are afraid and not really aware of what's going on around you, then it's easy for you to be manipulated and taken advantage of because fear is what dictates to you. Fear now controls you. So many people now are living in fear. And what's strange about that is many of the people that are so afraid nowadays are Christians. People that claim to love God, people that claim to trust in the Most High, they fear much more than the world does. And maybe that fear comes from being aware or knowing the prophecies of the Bible and what's to come to pass. See, it's one thing to talk about how you trust God and how good God is and how you have faith. And then when you start going through trials and tribulations, when you start going through that testing time, then you 
become more aware of how faithless you have become. But I want to read a scripture to you taken from 2 Timothy starting from the first to the seventh verse. Actually, it's the first chapter, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, and it reads as follows. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to repeat that again. And this is to those that say that they trust and believe in the Most High. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. In other words, we have the authority over whatever it is that causes us to fear. We have authority over that. Because it's God, our creator, that has given us the spirit of fear. But it has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So those of you that claim to trust in the most high, but yet you're operating in fear. And when you operate in fear being that you're supposed to be the light of the world. And if you have children that's watching you, then they too become fearful because fear is contagious. You ever be around someone and you're standing there talking to them and then all of a sudden they see something that they fear and they start running and then before you realize it, you're running too? And you're questioning like, well, why am I running? You turn around and look and then you realize that it's really nothing. But that person might have had a fear of a butterfly. For some reason, they don't like butterflies. They are fearful of butterflies. So when they saw that butterfly, they took off running. And you not knowing why they're running, you too begin to start running until you realize it was a harmless butterfly. That's the spirit of fear. It's contagious. And it has taken many people in this time period into bondage. Where people are afraid to leave their homes. People are afraid to go around their own family members and loved ones. People are separating themselves from their family, friends, and loved ones because they are living in fear. I want to read another scripture to you. The next scripture is taken from the book of Romans, the 8th chapter. Reading the 14th to the 16th verse. And it reads as follows. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Remember, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So it's the spirit that God gives you, not the spirit that you get from your ancestors or witchcraft or whatever you choose to partake in. We're dealing with an entirely different spirit, the most powerful spirit in the universe. The most authoritative spirit in the universe is the spirit of God. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. I'm going to read that 16th verse again. For ye for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, 
Abba Father. So you can call the Most High Daddy. For all of you out there that's fatherless, you can call him Daddy. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father. And then the 16th verse says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. So if you are of the child of the Most High, why are you afraid? Why are you fearful? Oh, because of what's coming down the tube, what has been predicted and prophesied? See, that's why the Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto Yah, a workman that needs not be ashamed. We have to study. Don't just go by what the preacher tells you or what you hear someone else say. But grab that Bible, that book that many people doubt and question. And study it for yourself. That's how you become armed and equipped to, to, to deal with today's society. See, right now, there's a spirit of fear that's walking up and down the earth seeking whom it may devour. Seeking whom it may placed into bondage because once you're fearful, once you're in bondage, you become a slave. And if you're a slave, it's easy to control you. It's easy to manipulate you. It's easy to get you to do what the government or this administration want you to do. But if you are of the people of Yah, you're not of the world. The Bible tells you to love not the world, neither the things of the world. For if you love the world, the love of Yah is not in you. So you have to sanctify yourself, separate yourself from the world. While the world is living in fear and terror, you live in the spirit and liberty of Christ, the freedom of Christ. I want to read Psalms 68, reading from the first to the sixth verse. And it reads as follows. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. And there's many that hate the most high in this day and time because his word goes against their wicked and evil agenda. But it says, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away as wax melteth before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. See, this is how you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be fearful. You're not supposed to be in bondage. But the scripture says, but let the righteous be glad. So even in difficult times, even in hard times, even in trying times, even in times where they give you a choice to either take the jab or lose your job, the Bible says, but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea. Let them exceedingly rejoice. That's what you're supposed to do. That's how you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to allow fear 
to control you. The fourth verse says, sing unto God. And this is the verse I love. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. Now, I'm sure a lot of y'all had no idea that Yah was in the Bible because in the Hebrew scriptures, there's no J, it's a, it's a Y. So the fourth verse says, sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heaven by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. A fatherless of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Now, for those of you that always complain about growing up without your father. You have a father. And I completely understand you're referring to an earthly father, a biological father. But there's a father that created you, that created your biological father and mother that's greater than all. In the fifth verse, again, a father to the fatherless. So Yah is a father to those without a father. So you have a replacement. A placement that is rich in houses and land. That's able to provide exceedingly abundant of more which you can ask or even think. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. But the rebellious Dwell in a dry land. You ever wonder why that you dwell in a dry land, that you exist in a dry land? That everything seems to be going wrong for you? That you see everyone around you prospering? And yet you never seem to be able to get a break? Well, maybe because of the fact that you are rebellious towards the Most High. Maybe because of the fact that you're rebellious when it comes to living righteously or living a right life. When you're rebellious, you get nothing from God. So when disaster strikes and you call upon a God that does not know you and that you don't know, why do you expect him to answer? Why do you expect the God that you reject, that you denounce, why would you expect him to come to your aid when that is not your God? You never received him as God. You never acknowledged him as God. But when things go wrong or when a loved one is sick, now you want to call upon him who you have not heard or whom you have not allowed yourself to submit yourself to. The Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? But you reject the preacher. The last and final verse I'm going to read is taken from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, reading the 5th to the 8th verse. And it reads as follows. And he that sat upon the throne said, now this is telling you who's speaking. This is not Yeshua. This is not Mark, Luke, James, John. 
This is the most high. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He and she that overcometh, overcometh what? Everything that we have to deal with today and tomorrow. Because we really don't know what tomorrow holds. And things will get worse before they get better. But according to the book of Revelation, it says, he that overcometh, in other words, he that endureth. There's another verse that said, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So you can say that you're saved now, but no one is really saved until the end. Or until it's time for you to pass from this life to the afterlife. Organically pass from this life to the afterlife. And I say organically because there are too many people that can't handle their current situations and they take themselves out. They put a halt to their own life. So not only did you not complete the course of life, but you have not completed the test of life. So you automatically fail. So God is not looking at the point that you're a good person, that you've done good things while you were here. Are you able to finish the course that he prescribed for you? Are you able to finish the test and pass it? To go on to paradise. But the Bible says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the fearful, this is what we start out talking about being afraid. And he's telling you. What's going to happen if you remain being fearful? If you remain being in the bondage of fear, he's telling you what your end will be. So there should be no questions as to where you go when you complete your life here on earth. But the fearful. The unbelieving, those of you that are unbelievers, that doubt the word of God, that don't believe the word of God, that reject the word of God. But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, those of you that practice lying, those of you that continuously lie, not be truthful, it says all liars, white liars, little liars, big liars, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So for you to be fearful is for you to be building your place in hell. 
You are now creating what your afterlife is going to be. And again, Yah has not given us the spirit of fear. That's why I can speak so boldly. I can speak boldly without fear. Because I've reached a place in my life where, yes, I do value my life. I love my life. But not to the point where I become in bondage or ensnared with fear. Not being able to express myself. Not being able to defend myself and my family. I don't have that kind of fear. So, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power slash authority and of a sound mind. So when we speak, we speak with a sound mind. We have our own mind to think, to make up our own mind and decisions and not be controlled by a tyrannical government. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe, until next time, I'm fearless.